Hello and welcome to Camp Tastic Crafts video on making notebooks. The first thing we're gonna speak about in our kits are our paper pads. You will either have both sizes or mostly this or mostly these. If you have mostly this size, this is six by eight, each page is meant to give you two pieces of paper. All of, of our pieces of paper are going to be cut down to six, four by six. And since this is six by eight, you're going to get two. Now make sure that they're, when you cut them, you remember to cut them that way. So when, you tear, when they tear these pages out, they're going to tear them so this comes out. This isn't part of the size, so you can disregard that. Your size starts from where the pattern starts, and then you're going to cut four, and this is already six. So you'll cut four inches, and then you'll have another one that's four by six, which gives you a cover and a back, two sides. They might not necessarily want to use this paper for both, but you will save the other pieces of paper because somebody else can use them for a cover piece. If you are using this size paper, when you cut your paper, you are going to have leftovers. These leftovers are great to use for the tab punch, as you can see here, for the tab punch, or for the ripped effect, which is here. Now this ripped effect, I have not ever had a student want to do the ripped effect. They just, they, they are happy with them just being a solid notebook without the ripped effect. So I will show you how to do that ripped effect. Keep in mind, I would keep that to maybe 13 and over to do that torn effect because it's a little bit tricky to get the papers to line up and it can be frustrating for some to get these to line up here. So again, these, if you don't have any of this size notebook, you will have six by six paper that I have cut down for you, which you will then be able to have these scraps. This notepad will not give you any scraps, but I will provide paper so you will have scraps. Okay, so I've already pre-selected my colors that I wish to use. Everybody needs two pieces of cardboard. They've already been pre-cut to size for you. The first thing they're going to do, when I do this, this craft, the first thing I do is lay out all the paper pads. And I say, okay, everybody, you need to fit, pick four pieces of paper that you wish to use. Then I have them come up to me when they choose their paper. I hand them two pieces of cardboard and I ask them, which way do you want your pattern to go? This way or this way? That's important because you can see these butterflies. If we put the butterflies upside down or sideways. So you want to ask how they want their pattern to run. You can make these notebooks this way, this way or this way with your rings. So you can put the rings here, you can put the rings here, or you can put the rings so they lay like this. This one is to go this way, and the one I show you now, we're gonna make it so it goes this way. Okay, so now we want to tape all of our papers onto our cardboard. Everybody will have one of these, or they'll share between two people or a couple people on the table, if they're right-handed, their thumb is gonna go here and their pointer finger is on top. If they're lefty, thumb in the center, pointer on top. It's important that you kinda tell them to take their time when they're using this because sometimes they have a difficult time getting it to work, but they're very easy to use. So you want them to flip over their paper. Some paper might be double-sided, so they're gonna put the tape on the side that they do not want to see. And they're going to trim the outside, border the outside, so all four edges and then an X in the center. Now this is the part that some of them will find it to be a little bit tricky. I got tape on the table. <laughs> when they're holding their cardboard, you want to have everybody use the table as their friend. So they're going, to, you're gonna to have to tell them this a few times because they often wanna work on it like this, but what happens is they don't line it up, then they peel this up, it curls the paper, and then they can't use that piece of paper. So everything goes on the table, line up their edges nicely on the table and then they just lift it up and it lines up perfectly on the cardboard. If it overlaps or a little bit, you could just trim it with scissor with scissors, but most of the time if they use the table, 99% of the time it works. If they don't use the table, they don't get so lucky sometimes. So make sure they use the table. So this is going to be my inside back. This is going to be my back. Then we're going to make an X. I mean, not an X, we're gonna outline. I will outline all of these and then I will come back to show you the next step. Okay, so now I've finished lying my paper onto the cardstock and if you can see, my peacocks face this way. So I wanted to make sure when I open my book, the rainbows are the right direction. I tell them you're going to help them 
align their papers because they're going to come up to you. You're going to cut down on the guillotine, everyone's paper four by six. You'll hand them the cardboard and then you're going to tell them, arrange your book like you are going to hold your book. So then they can understand where they need to tape their paper. Otherwise, sometimes they'll flip it over and one side will be backwards when they flip it around. So you wanna make sure that they kind of set their book out like this and check to make sure that their pages all match. So for the cover, I kept the cover because I wanted to show you how I do the ripped effect. So I'm going to show you that now. Here are my paper selections. These are my scraps. This is the paper that I cut from the six by six. These aren't actually scraps. That's why they're a little bit bigger. Your scraps are gonna be this size, but I had this leftover paper. So I'm, gonna use, I'm going to use these. The, when you rip your cards, you, the part that you're ripping, tearing away from you is the part you want to use. So the part piece that's going towards me, this little piece, is not the piece that I want. Because if you can see, it gives this nice ripped detail in the paper, whereas the other side doesn't give you that white edge showing. So that paper is going to go here. And let me do my butterfly. I need less of the butterfly. So I'll rip it about here. So these are going to get glued down this way. So now we need to put a little bit of tape on here. Always do the edges and the corners, the so all four sides. This is the tricky part. Line up your paper, use the table. The table is your friend, the table is your friend. And once that they're lined up, stick it down. And then the, we're going to do the same thing to get it onto the heart of our piece of paper, the main body. So put your paper on the table. So sometimes if you saw before I got tape on my table, I often give them a piece of printer paper to work on so the tape gets on the printer paper, not on the table, and then I throw out the printer paper when we're done using the tape. So everybody can work on a piece of plain piece of paper because they, they will run off of the um, sides. They'll run off the sides onto the table with the tape roller just like I did. So it's better than having double-sided tape stuck to your table everywhere. Okay, so here's my cover. Now I'm going to add it to here. Let me make sure this image doesn't matter so I can put it anyway. All four sides, X down the center. Use my table as my BFF. Line it up and stick it down. Okay, so now we're ready to punch the holes. This is where our cinch tool comes in. This is a cinch. This is gonna do all of our work to put our bindings in, which are here, are our coils, and to punch all of our paper. So with the cinch, you wanna unhook the handle, put that down. There are numbers here, and since we are working with a four by six piece of paper, if you're punching it on the angle so the notebook opens this way, you're going to line up the number four. This is the best way to do it. 90% of my the people that make notebooks with, with me build them this way. It's just easier because you can see your number four, stand above, have them stand above, line up the number four, You'll see you're just lined up with this number four and my camera's gonna shake, I apologize. But and now they're gonna two hands, punch down. Pull it back up. Make sure when they put the card in, they push it all the way back and you will see it gives us these nice holes. Now we're going to do the same thing with our next one. Make sure that they know which way they want their pattern to go. If I punch it this way, this is going to be inside of my notebook. I want that to be on the outside, but I also want my shape, my pattern to be the right way because I want my book to be built this way. So I'm putting here, this here, lining up my four, four, two hands, and open it up. Now, if they wanted to add their holes to this side, this is more you have to eyeball the center of your paper, but pretty much they're gonna line up this side of their paper almost with these. If you can see, I left a little bit of space. Basically, you wanna see, check how much distance is there and how much distance is there. So you can see it's pretty even lined up with the, these, this part of the machine, and then they'll punch down to get the holes in the center. I would suggest doing it this way because it's more exact. You line it up with the four and then you know you're in the center. And now they get their note cards. So each book gets about, each pack of note cards gives you three books. So I kind of just eyeball where that is. 
I don't count them out. You can, of course, count them out if you want to, but I just eyeball it. So I broke it into thirds. Now we have to punch our holes in our notebook. So remember before I said you had to eyeball if you're doing your notebook this way, they then have to eyeball again to do the note card. So I would suggest, like I said, to have everybody do it where it's a four by six and their card shape is this way. So they're going to take two or three of these note cards at a time line it up just like they did the cover make sure the lines of their note cards are facing up and then they're going to punch you're going to repeat that for their entire stack of note cards okay so i finished punching all of my holes in the note cards make sure you tell them when they put their note cards in or anything that they push it all the way back until it hits the back of this that way they don't undercut here and, and then the holes will end up on the outside Okay, so now oh, we're ready to bind our book. We're going, we're going to decorate. Decorating is last. So first, over here are these lovely little holes. You're going to take your spring, which is, which is already cut down to size. They can choose their color, and you're going to clip it on there. Then first you're going to add your back. Then you're going to add your papers. Then you're going to add your cover. Now we take it off. Everything is here. We flip our tool around. You want to feed the metal wires so they're, everything is underneath this little, there's a black rubber pad and you wanna make sure all of the metal, metal rings are underneath there. You wanna let them do this part. It's, it's fun for them. They like punching, they like crimping, they like doing all this, but you might have to help them a little bit get it into the right spot. So now it's here. I like to hold my paper, a hand down on this, and then you gently just push the handle down. They don't have to go all the way. I like to go a little bit, look at how close together it is. It's not together yet, so I'm gonna put it back in, and I'm gonna push it a little more. Now it's together. So now my notebook is bound, and we're ready to decorate. Decorating is the best part. It is so much fun. So how I set it up, first I lay out all the paper on the table. I tell them to pick their paper. Then I tell everybody to clean the paper up and then we get the cardboard. They come up to me, I help them cut their paper down and then they glue their paper, then they punch their holes. Once we're at this stage, I take out sections. So first I lay the stickers out. I'm going to decor decorate mine off camera because it, it, I'm a slow, it takes me a while. I change my mind so many times. So I'm not going to show you my process of decorating it, but I will show you how I decorated it and I will explain to you how I did it. But as they build it, I take the stickers out. Then you'll get little charms. Once they're done with all the stickers and everybody's done and we've cleaned up, then I let them pick out their charms and their paper clips. While they're decorating, as they finish decorating, don't forget you have the punch to make them, to let them make tabs. So the tab punch, you will use the scrap papers that are from your six by six paper pad, or I have included an entire sheet of six by 12 paper that specifically says this is for tabs. Use your tab punch, they'll pick a couple of sheets of where they want to and use your stapler and they'll just staple in the tabs. So I'm going to decorate this and I will be back. I have finished making my notebook. As you can see, I decorated it. When they're using stickers, I try to tell them not to unpeel any stickers unless they know for sure they're going to use them because once they unstick them, they can't always put them back in the same place and then they might go to waste. So they should only pick, use the stickers they're going to use. You do have to repeat that a few times. You are going to have some type of paper clip that comes with it. You may have a tassel that is already has a clip on it. Then you would just, they would pick one and they clip it on. Or you might have a charm, some type of charm that needs to be put on with a jump ring. So in order to, which I will supply the jump rings as well. You want to open your jump ring. This is, this part you would probably do for them. Feed on your charm and then come over here and loop it around only one of the wires and then close your jump ring. So now you have a cute little dangle over here. You wanna make sure you're putting it on a close. If you put it over both of these, it's just gonna come off. So you have to just loop it around one. So here's my little cute dangle charm. Then they're going to decorate. These goodies are the last step because this is a lot of fun for them to add their little bonus stuff. But you'll put their paper clip on and I cannot find my stapler anywhere. I don't know what happened to it. But these just get stapled on. You will have lots of paper and it says this is to for your tabs, use the tab punch and they can punch as many tabs as they want and they're just going to staple them however 
they see fit to where they want to place them. You can help them staple them as well, but let's say if I would place those like that. So that is it. That is our completed notebook. They love this project. It's a lot of fun. They have a lot of options, a lot of choices to make. Here's the back. The, the way this crimps is a lot of fun for them to crimp. And of course, who doesn't like decorating an outside of a book with lots of stickers? So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope they enjoy it. I know they will. Please send pictures. I'd love to see your work and happy crafting.